Hey, how y'all doing? It's Shay, and in this video today, we are going to be talking about my music wrap-up for 2022. This is a video that I have been really excited to do. I have all my notes on my MacBook right here. My brain is ready to rock and roll. 2022 was a great year for me, music-wise, because it was the first time I gave myself this sort of challenge, which I'm doing again this year, and I'm already excited. I can't wait for the wrap-up that I'm going to do at the end of this year, but as for 2022. The challenge I gave myself was I wanted to listen to at least 200 albums that were new to me, not 200 albums that blatantly came out in 2022, but albums that I had never heard before. I also cheated a little bit on this rule because I went back and listened to some albums from my childhood that I had never critically listened to, and I critically listened to them all the way through, so in that way, they were new to me. But for the most part, these were all albums that I had never heard before, a lot of them from artists that I had never listened to before. I found a lot of good stuff, a lot of new things that I'm a fan of, a lot of things that surprised me. I'm not going to be talking about any albums that I absolutely hated in this video, because to be honest with you, if I was listening to an album and I didn't like it, I just stopped listening to it and I didn't even add it to my listen to playlist, because why would I keep listening to it? Not only that, why would I waste time talking about something I hate and being negative when I have all this good stuff that I can't wait to talk about and show y'all that I would rather spend time talking about. So there will not be any hating or really punching down in this video. Music and music culture is full of elitism enough as it is. If you're looking for that, get out of here. What I will be talking about is some albums that weren't my thing, that's how I like to put it, because they are someone else's thing. That didn't make them bad, you know, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is just, this is awful. It's just, I was like, hmm, this is a thing, and this is a thing that is not my thing. But I can appreciate that it's someone else's thing. Objectively, I can say, it's good, it was well made, just not something that I would choose to listen to or re-listen to. But let's get started on the general facts. The total that I listened to was 235 albums. 21 of those were EPs. Yes, I did count EPs. Do not come for me. They count. That means 214 were full-length albums. 235. I know that's a big number. Do not panic. I'm not going to be talking about every single one of them in this video. I'm just going to be going over the highlights, artist albums, songs, things that I found interesting. The ones that stuck out to me the most. But if you are curious to discover every single album and EP that I listen to, the playlist is public and I'll put the link down in the description so you can go check it out to your heart's content. I actually hope you find something interesting in this video that appeals to you that you do want to check out and you'll go to the playlist, find it, listen to it, and hopefully have a new favorite artist or a new favorite song. Something I didn't do in the 2022 challenge of this was keep track of the length of time that all of these albums and EPs were. But I am doing it in this year, so I won't have to go back and go through like I did this year. But I did. I went back through every single album, and I added up the time. The total time spent listening to all of these albums, not counting repeat plays, just the first time straight through all of them, was 6 days, 11 hours, 4 minutes, and 54 seconds. Which, that's kind of funny, because 6-11, that's my birthday. <laughs> Not planned, but my goodness, things just work out, don't they? More simply put, that's a little over 155 hours. That's a lot of music. That's a lot of songs. Let's start with the longest album that I listened to category, which I know I just said longest album, but there's two because they're actually tied. The first is The Clash's re-release of Combat Rock Remastered plus People's Hall bonus tracks. That was an hour and 41 minutes long. That is tied with The Kinks' We Are the Village Green Preservation Society Deluxe Edition, which was 2 hours and 44 minutes. Now, I know what you're saying. Shay, one is clearly longer. Yes, but listen. An hour of that We Are the Village Green Preservation Society album was just remixes of the same song. And to be honest with you, I, I didn't listen to all the remixes. I, I listened to about an hour and 40-something minutes of the album. Along with the live versions and the BBC versions and I think the stereo versions. They also had like stereo mono mix versions and I'm like, I know what it's like. I know what it sounds like in one speaker. I know what it's going to sound like in two. I'm not listening to another hour of that. We are the Village Green Preservation Society. I want to sing it every time I say it. That's a great album. You should check it out. As for The Clash's Combat Rock Remastered. I love The Clash. I freaking love The Clash. 
I love the Combat Rock album, but the remastered version did not make my uh, engineering ears happy. I did not I did not like the remastered compared to the original. I thought maybe it would be cleaned up, but it's too much cleaned up. It's way too clean. I don't like it. It's not terrible. I'm just like, mm. I prefer the, the tape hiss and the, the kind of graininess of the original. This one just sounds way too clean. It sounds too spotless, too vivid. But if you've never listened to The Clash or Combat Rock before, you, you won't notice it. It's, it's still a great album. And because I want to get them out of my way, we're going to be talking about the albums that weren't my thing. First up was one of the first albums I listened to in 2022, Wunderbar Gawk. Part of the challenge of listening to 200 new albums was to branch out into genres I don't usually branch out into. I am one of those annoying people who says, I listen to everything. And I do. I try to, at least. I fully believe in this day and age, with our resources and with technology, there is no way that you cannot find at least one artist in every single genre you like. I fully believe that you can. Therefore, like I said, part of this challenge was to venture into genres I don't normally listen to and try things, albeit sometimes fail. Gawk was one of them. It's a fine album. They're a fine band. It was put together well. It just wasn't my thing. Morbid Stuff by Pup. Pup is kind of surprising that as aspect because that album was really hit or miss for me. There were some songs that I really, really liked on that album, but they were minor compared to the stuff that I was just, eh, to me. They're both more on the indie alt rock sort of spectrum. I'd venture to say harder indie slash alt rock. Those two albums, Morbid Stuff and Wunderbar, are the first time I've ever heard albums by these artists, so I'm willing to give them a chance because more often than not, there is something an artist makes that I will like, even if I don't like their other stuff. It's also the case that sometimes an artist I love will put out something that I don't like, and that's that's totally fine. It's really rare to have everything be a total 100% hit. George Strait. He has two albums on here. Straight Country and Straight From The Heart. I'm just not a George Strait girl. I, he is such a legend in country music that I kind of felt ashamed being where I'm from. And I'm like, I've never listened to a George Strait album. Like, I've heard George Strait songs, but I've never listened to his albums straight through. That's why I went through and did that. I thought, let's start with the first two that he's really well known and well loved for. And it's not because I don't like country. I love country music. There's a lot of great country artists. This kind of era, that style of country, is just not my thing. I think I was born a little too late for it, got into it a little too late. If you're looking for just solid, good country though, especially older kind of country, I would recommend these albums to you, for you to check out. Oh, the Moody Blues. Okay, the Moody Blues are a rare kind of band that, one of the only bands that my parents did not listen to when I was growing up. But they do have a lot of albums that prolific vinyl collectors have, and I saw their albums for cheap in a record store one day, and I was like, well, I'm going to pick these up because, again, these are staples that every vinyl collector seems to at least own, and they are A Question of Balance and To Our Children's Children's Children. Before I actually ever got to listen to the vinyl to check them out, the power supply went out on my turntable. <clears throat> And I thought, you know, I'm just going to listen to these albums on Spotify, and if I don't like them, I'm going to go trade them in at my local record store and get some in-store credit. And that's exactly what I did, and I think I bought a Depeche Mode album with that credit. Yeah, I think I bought Speak and Spell. Anyway, I did not like those albums. I can see why a lot of people would. If you're into 70s prog stuff, experimental, more type stuff, Pink Floyd, Yes... Check them out if you haven't already, which you probably have. And the last one, this is going to ruffle some feathers. Ooh, I feel this already. This this almost went into my hot takes category. I want to re-emphasize, don't hate these albums. They're not bad albums. They're fine. They're even good. Maybe there's something that you listen to and that you love. That's great. I'm so happy for you. That's amazing. You can keep them, though. <laughs> Come Home, The Kids Miss You by Jack Harlow. I know, I hear the I hear the screaming, I feel the tomatoes being thrown in my face, and you know what? That's perfectly okay. There, I think I'm partially to blame simply because of all the hype I've let myself hear about Jack Harlow, about how many people simp for Jack Harlow. They're like, oh my gosh, I saw him and I nearly passed out, like he's amazing, like, 
blah, 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 Jack Harlow. And I'm like, I better check this dude out. He came up recommended on my Spotify, and I was like, I hear about him enough, I might as well check him out. So I did. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. I really like his beats. I think he flows very well. I think he flows very naturally. He's definitely got a talent for it. Do not get me wrong. He's talented. Here's another reason why this is not Jack's fault. I am so picky when it comes to hip hop and rap and I'm not gonna be an elitist here like, old hip hop was better, old rap was better. Cause that's not true. That's an objective opinion. I am just very picky when it comes to hip hop and rap because of what I was raised on. I was raised on a ton of different rock, a ton of different country from all across different subgenres, different years. But for rap, I was mainly raised on 90s hardcore rap. I know, look at me. Can you picture this at five years old listening to NWA? Well, I was. So that's what you're getting when I'm going into Jack Harlow is someone who was raised on like Ice Cube and NWA and SoCal underground rap. It's not really a fair fight, now is it? <laughs> but that's on me. I know I'm picky and I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> Just not something that I see myself vibing to. I'm more of a, you know, pink season kind of girl, to be honest with you. Most overdue albums. These are albums that I feel like I'm the last person in the world to listen to or that I just should have listened to a long time ago. We have T-Rex's Electric Warrior. Amazing, legendary classic rock album that I don't ever remember listening to growing up. Of course I've heard some of T-Rex's songs and Mark Boland's stuff, but I've never actually listened to the full album. And I'm so glad I did. This album is incredible. It has great guitar work, just good, crunchy, gnarly classic rock. Depeche Mode, Some Great Reward. This was a really eye-opening album for me. I knew Depeche Mode from their classic hits. I listened to them a little bit growing up, but I was like, I'm gonna check out their actual full-length albums because I only know them mostly from their popular singles, like Just Can't Get Enough, of course, Personal Jesus. Some Great Rewards shocked me because it's very noise music. <laughs> I think there's even, my favorite song on the album is People Are People, and I think it has a pan falling down the stairs as part of the intro, and I'm like, sign me up. I was very surprised because I'm not typically into kind of new wave sort of stuff, but I love the Some Great Reward album. My favorite song is People Are People and then Blasphemous Rumors. Hosier, Hosier, Wasteland Baby Man, Forest Man that everyone on Tumblr would give their life for. I finally listened to him. It took forever, but I listened to him and he's very good. I, I see what the hype is about. It, he's kind of in the not my thing category, but it's more so because of the genre. I do see myself listening to him though if I get into a certain magical forest poetry kind of mood. Dude's got vocal chops. Dude can sing. Dude knows good music. Dude knows good sounds. I approve. They're very good. And I know I just mentioned Pink Season earlier. <laughs> um, the next ones are Smithereens and Nectar by Joji. Why did it take me this long to listen to these albums when I have been a fan of Joji for years now as both Joji and Filthy Frank? Because I was scared that I wasn't going to like them. That's why. But I did. I absolutely love them. He, he is someone else who I think has the ears. He has good ears for sound, I fully believe. I don't remember where I heard this, but I feel like I read about somewhere where he talked about he likes his songs, he likes his beats to have texture, and I fully get it. All his songs have plenty of texture and they make me very happy because they do so. They're very well done. Can vibe to them all day, all night long. Love them. Amazing. This next album is actually going to be a segue into our next category, which is album slash artist that surprised me because it fits into very overdue and very much surprised me. And that is Lizzo's Cuz I Love You. My cousin, who I love very dearly, is very much into Lizzo and it was because of her that I even checked out Lizzo in the first place. When I was looking for albums to put on my stuff I want to hear list, I thought about my cousin and her talking about how much she absolutely adores Lizzo and I of course knew about the hype around Lizzo and I was like, you know what, let's give it a shot, let's, let's check Lizzo out. I love Lizzo. She got vocal chops, her and that, that hosier dude, that hos hosier man, them, I don't know what, what they identify as. 
they both got quite the vocal chops on them. Her songs are not only a vibe, but her vocal work is impeccable. She's just fun. But I just didn't really know what to expect because, as you can tell with this list, hype is not my friend. So I wasn't really sure what to expect, but it surprised me with how much I absolutely loved it. I found myself re-listening and re-listening to almost every single song. The thing that I was very much surprised about was as I was listening through the album, I was like, I'm pretty sure I've heard every single one of these songs almost in a commercial in the past year or so. So good for you, Lizzo. Good for you. You're amazing. Keep killing it. Other artists slash albums that surprised me, Carly Rae Jepsen and her dedicated album. Again, I don't know where I heard this, but I heard it from someone enough that I took it seriously, where they were like, Carly Rae Jepsen is an absolutely underrated, slept on artist. People diss her or shuffle her off because of Call Me Maybe, but she's actually amazing. And I said, I'll take that challenge. She's great. She's amazing. I'm not a person that is obviously not very much into the pop world. I'm not very well versed in pop. So I had low expectations going into this where I was like, this is going to be really bubblegummy, it's not going to be my thing, but <sighs> she's great. She's amazing. I felt kind of embarrassed that I've slept on her talent since Call Me Maybe, but also, like I said, pop's not my thing. I don't really delve into that world, but I'm so glad I did. That's actually a running theme for this category. I'm looking down at my list right here and most of the artists that I'm about to mention for Surprise Me are in pop. Which goes to my point, if you delve far enough into a genre, you're gonna find something you like in this day and age. Or surprises you at least. Olivia Rodrigo's Sour, another album that was very much hyped and I think very well deserving of the hype. But hot take that Driver's License is not the best song on that album. Driver's License is actually one of my least favorite songs on that album. But the engineering, the bass, the first song on that album, when I heard the bass, I was like, your tone, your tone, your tone, that tone. Do not knock the Sour album until you give it a listen. As a piece of audio engineering, even if you're not into pop music, listen to it because of the audio quality, how well it's even made. It is put together so, so, so well. It is so well done. One that people will not be surprised by in general, but will be surprised by when it comes to me, is Harry Styles. I actually like Harry Styles. I was not a One Direction girly. I was one of the girls that saw that something was popular and I was like, ew, gross. I'm different. So I missed out on the 1D phase, but to be fair to me, I was never a boy band girl to begin with, unless it's Big Time Rush. Do not come for me. But I listened to Harry Styles' solo stuff. I listened to actually all of his albums, including Harry's House because it came out in 2022. I listened to Harry Styles' Fine Line and Harry's House. I liked all of them. I really liked all of them. They were really good. I knew that he could sing. I knew all of them had vocal chops. But I think all the albums were really well done. They were very fun, very danceable, just a good time. Also his song As It Was, which is one of my favorite songs from him, was number one on my birthday this past year. So. That's kind of sick. And obviously I've never been to one of his shows. I could never afford to go to one of his shows, I think. But from what I've seen, he's really into it for the music and for the love of it, which is very important to me. Go Harry, you're good. You, you've made a, you, Olivia, Carly Rae, and a few others have helped convert me into a little more of a pop music lover. Appreciator, I'll say, appreciator. We're to my favorite category, which is the Albums I Absolutely Adored category. This year, 2022, was an amazing year for finding new artists and albums that I absolutely loved and became minorly obsessed with. In that realm, we're going to start by talking about, if you've watched any videos on this channel, you won't be surprised, We Were Sharks. The first album that I listened to of theirs was Lost Touch, and this is the case where judging an album by its cover paid off handsomely. I saw that cover and I was like... Then when Beyond Repair, the first song on the album, started, I was driving and I was a danger to myself because I just, when those drums and the vocals came in, ma'am, are you kidding me? Ma'am, I wish I could play it for you. Go listen to it. Go listen to Beyond Repair. I was like, this album, it just blew my mind. And that was the case for the entire album. Not only are the songs catchy, they're fun, but the drums and the vocals are flawless. They're incredible. 
They have the most songs of any artist this past year added to my Happy Engineers playlist, which means songs that make me stem, that make me like, meh. Nah. So, good job, We Were Sharks. That album, Lost Touch. Second to that is their album, New Low, which came out more recently. I probably listened to Shameless and Over This, like, a thousand times. I... What can I say? When songs are good, they're they're good. They're more than good. They're amazing. I would love to go intern for the engineer who was behind those albums, but from what I understand, he's in Canada, and Canada's very cold. I don't think I would do well in Canada, but I would love to intern for their engineer because his drums and his vocals, I mean, everything that is on those albums, engineering-wise, just incredible to listen to. I know I keep saying that word, but truly, like, it blew my mind. And I never get tired of listening to it, which is saying something, because I get bored really fast, but I have listened to those songs, those albums, straight through, over and over and over, and I never get bored of them, I never get sick of them. They're just fun, they're rocking, an amazing time. New Low by We Were Sharks and Lost Touch. Go check them out right now. I love this band and their album so much, they actually made it onto my top five artists for Spotify wrapped just within the year the rest are artists that I listen to constantly throughout the years non-stop this is the first time that a new artist that I've just discovered that year has made it onto my rap that's how much I listen to them old bones by broadside has some very beautifully written songs if you need to cry or need to rock out or just want to listen to some great tunes that album has it all country wise Cody Johnson's human the double album amazing. Cody Johnson is, he's a real one. He's really cool. Tell You Can't is one of the most beautifully written songs that I have heard in recent years. It almost makes me cry every time I listen to it. Maylene and the Sons of Disaster, their self-titled album, again, nails the drum sounds. Drum sounds are probably the sounds I listen to the most, just in my music taste. This album nails the drum sounds. It's a little bit of a under the radar album from what I understand, but those that know about it, no. Betty James by Jimmy Allen. Jimmy Allen is a country artist who has just more recently been getting a little bit of the praise that he is so deserving of. He deserves so much more. Betty James is an album full of collaborations, but I thoroughly enjoyed every single second of it, and it was way too short. That's how I knew it was an album that I was going to adore, because I was sad, genuinely, that it was over so soon. I was like, wait, wait, please have more. If your concern about country music is like the beer and the tractors and the pickup trucks and all that, you're not into that, I recommend checking out Jimmy Allen. He's got beautiful songs like Down Home, again, another song that almost makes me cry every time I listen to it, and the Betty James album, it's in its entirety. Relisten of Picture Show by Neon Trees. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is one of my most <laughs> hard opinions. This is one of my most vivacious opinions that I have. I freaking love Neon Trees. I have loved the Picture Show album since it came out. It is one of the first albums that I bought in its entirety when I was a teenager. It came out when iTunes was still a big prominent thing and you can buy things, buy the song, buy the single. I bought the entire album. Back in my more judgmental days, it was the one album that I was like, this is good pop music. I was one of the people that was like, uh, pop music, gross. Thankfully, I've outgrown that mindset. But that was one of the albums that I was like, no, this is good. This is amazing. It is one of the greatest pop albums ever made. And I fully stand by that statement. Why do I know that? I re-listened to it about eight years later, however many years it's been. Because over the years, I've listened to different songs from it, but I haven't listened to the full album in its entirety in a long time. So I gave a re-listen, a fresh listen to it this year. Still, I think one of the most solid, gorgeous pop albums ever made. Along with that, I checked out Neon Tree's newer stuff. Pop Psychology and I Can Feel You Forgiving Me blew my mind. Pop Psychology especially. If you want an album that is good for your ears, good for the soul, good for the vibes, poppy but not to the point where you're like, wow, this is mindless, listen to Pop Psychology. Incredible. They did it again. It's... It's, I think, one of the pop albums that is going to hold up to the test of time. Highly, 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 cannot highly recommend enough that you listen to Neon Trees, especially Picture Show and Pop Psychology, but also I Can Feel You Forgetting Me is 
another great album. Another album that I want to mention is The Death of Peace of Mind by Bad Omens, and I'm gonna come out as a sounding like a hipster here. I liked Bad Omens before they blew up on TikTok. Yeah, I know. Let me hear the booing. Let, let me hear it. I don't care. Bad Omens had straight bangers even before they blew up on TikTok, but The Death of Peace of Mind... <sighs> I actually like the song Like a Villain best on that album. I think there is not one bad track on that album. Every single track is an absolute banger. But Like a Villain gets me every time. You want to see me move? You probably don't. Put on that song. Last album for the albums that I absolutely adored, Sad Looks Pretty on Me by Rivals. Rivals is a band that I discovered late into the year, much later than I should have, but I'm a fan now, devoted fan for Hopefully Life. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Sad looks pretty on me. The vocals, the guitars, the drums, the bass, everything is just absolutely beautiful. It comes together cohesively, very well done, very solid album, just rocking all the way through. As a last little bit to the video, I just want to take some time to mention artists that I didn't mention in the other categories that I want to give a little bit of a shout out to that you should check out. Morgan Wade and Haley Witters are two phenomenal female country artists. I listened to two albums by them this year and I was blown away by what I heard. They both have beautiful vocals, beautiful songwriting talent. I can't wait to see more from the future from these two. Very different, not that different stylistically, they're both country. Morgan Wade is sort of more rocky, whereas Haley Witters is more popish, more popish than Morgan Wade, I would say. But if you're looking for a kind of bridge into country or you're just curious about a more country-esque style because they're not like twang twang diddly dang type style both i think an easy gateway into country-esque music for those that don't even like country or think they may not like country <laughs> the dirty nil i love the dirty nil as much as i love we were sharks the dirty nil did not release a new album this year what they did release was a new single bye bye big bear and i have been blasting it non-stop for probably the past two weeks at least. It's been my status on Discord for a pretty good darn while. The Dirty Nil, kind of like We Were Sharks so far, has not had a single miss in my brain. Everything they do slaps. They give me happy engineers all the time. Again, with drums and vocal. They're just raw and crunchy and fun and dancey, but also mosh your face off at the same time. And they're also Canadian, like We Were Sharks. What is up with all these Canadian rock bands? getting the best of me lately. Am I gonna have to move to Canada? If you want a prime example of some of their great work plus a very hilarious music video, check out their music video for Pain of Infinity. I won't say anything about it, I won't spoil it for you, just... I'm just gonna show you a screenshot of why you should watch that video and I'm not gonna give you any context whatsoever. Know that it is what it is. The last artist I want to mention is an artist by the name of Soul Glow that I actually read about. I believe it was in, was it Alternative Press? I read about them in a magazine as an artist to look out for, and I actually did look out for them. I started listening to them. You know what I mentioned earlier that I was raised on hardcore rap, and that's kind of like why I'm picky about what hip-hop and rock and rap that I listen to now, hip-hop? They fit the bill. They, they pass the pickiness test. They are important. They are relevant. They are real, they are raw, they are honest, they are just chugga chugga crunchy, and they need more love. I can't wait to see what they put out in the future. I was a little bit nervous filming this video because, again, I didn't even think that I was going to be filming a video like this, but I really enjoyed it, and now I have ideas for this coming year, what more I'm going to talk about. It's a, it's a work in progress of how I'm going to frame these videos, how I'm going to organize them and set them up. This was a fun first try, fun fun first test run. There's nothing I love more than listening to new music, discovering new artists, and talking to people about music. Like I said, if you are curious for everything that I listened to this past year, all these new albums, the link to the playlist is going to be down in the description below. It's public. If you have any albums or complete artist discographies you think that I should check out, leave them in the comments down below and I'll add them to the Stuff I Want to Hear playlist. Stuff I Want to Hear playlist is basically the playlist of stuff I want to hear. It's the stuff that I'm going to be listening to next. It's usually newer stuff that I haven't heard before. I'll also link that playlist down below so that you can see and anticipate what I'm going to be listening to next. Might be talking about next. You never know. All that being said, even if you don't have a suggestion for me, I hope you found something in this video that interests you and 
you go to the playlist, check them out, and like I said, maybe find a new favorite artist or even just a new favorite song. Always remember that don't let anybody tell you what to like. You like what you want to like, but likewise, let people like what they want to like. Don't gatekeep. Don't be gatekept. Support your local music and stay metal. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't heard it from anyone else today, love you. Love and peace. Until tomorrow.